And I sort of have an analogy to this would be if you're interested in finding out how many carrots you're eating, you could count the little pieces of carrot in your stew, or instead you could actually count the whole carrots before you put them in. And that's what we're doing in this what? And before we get on to exactly what you found on the on quantities of plastics we're talking about here, what do we know about the damage that these plastics can do in the ocean ecosystems? So we know that plastics in the ocean are ingested by various animals, including things like sea turtles, uh, seabirds, and whales. We also know that plastic entangles these creatures as they're doing their um, natural migration and natural activities in the water. And we also now know that plastics tend to absorb organic chemicals like DDT and PCBs um, and flame retardants. And what we're now starting to look at is when the plastic gets to these small microplastics, these small fragments, whether or not that sorption of chemicals is impacting uh, the lower chain of our food web as well. So you looked at exactly how much plastic we're constantly adding to these marine environments. What number did you come up with? So what we found on our mid scenario um, is that 8 million metric tons of plastic entered the ocean in 2010. And this quantity is equal to about five plastic grocery bags full of plastic for every foot of coastline in the world. That's a pretty incredible way of looking at it. Did you sort of hone down into where this plastic was actually coming from? Yeah, so this, so the main goal of the research was to come up with this global number, but in order to calculate this global number, we had to use country scale data and population density and things like that. And so because of that, um, we do have country, uh, country level data as well. However, we do stress that um, in terms of examining you know, an individual country, you would want to refine this global data set with, you know, on the ground measurements and things like that. So we don't want to use this to point fingers, but I'm, I'm looking at the map, for example, that's published in your paper, and China is glowing there bright red. <coughs> Show the out crying as, uh, out. Perhaps one of the worst offenders, but then there are another, pretty much every coastal country, really, but a lot of coastal African countries, the USA, uh, parts of South America, are all glowing in an orange color. You're right. We're we're not pointing fingers with this research, and and we do see this as a global problem, and and solutions are going to come from all of the stakeholders globally. But because the research needed to be conducted, building upon country level data, we do have these rankings in this map. And I think what's really interesting is to be able to look at what were the influencing factors that placed countries, you know, at the top of this. And so some of those influencing factors are um, high population densities on the coastline, uh, a large quantity of waste generation, and um, also a large quantity of waste mismanaged or uncaptured waste. And the thing with plastic, I, I'm guessing, is it just takes so long for this problem to be solved, even if we stopped putting plastic in the oceans overnight, it biodegrades very slowly. So presumably this is a problem that's going to stretch into the future for a while. Yeah, so we've already had, since we're already finding plastic on our coastlines and in our ocean, we've already had large inputs. And so certainly we would like to stem this tide and, and cut back on those inputs and so improve our, our management of this plastic waste. But you're, you're also right, it doesn't go away, right? So even if we end up landfilling it or managing it somewhere else that doesn't biodegrade. And so we do need to figure out um, looking at recycling schemes and, and other solutions like that to be able to manage this way. And if we don't address this problem, if we do nothing, how bad could things get? So we have predicted um, through 2025 for this work and sort of as business as usual scenarios could play out if we don't make some changes then we could see um, a cumulative input of 155 million tons into the ocean in the next 10 years. And just to help us understand that figure a, a bit, have you sort of drilled that down into human terms? Sure, yeah. So you can imagine initially, as I said, there was five plastic bags per foot of coastline in the world, our cumulative input with business as usual until 2025 would be like 100 plastic bags 
full of lives like her foot of those on the world.